Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich is with me this morning. Newt, you wrote the book called Understanding Trump. Do you think Trump wants this spectacle that this has become? <clears throat> well, I think Trump understands the value of spectacles. <laughs> I don't know that he wants this one, but uh, nobody in modern politics has been better at dominating the news media, dominating the social media. Uh, and he puts all of his potential rivals in the, you know, they, they disappear. Uh, he, he absorbs all the energy in the room uh, and has done it brilliantly for the last two weeks. And frankly, he sets up a, he doesn't set it up, but he's now caught in a situation where your choice is simple. You're with the deep state, the corrupt, the dishonest, or you're with Donald Trump. Well, given that division, it becomes almost disloyal to not be supportive of Trump. And I think uh, the comments, for example, that were put out this morning uh, by uh, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee and the Homeland Security Committee who said, you can't have a gag order. And I think Jim Jordan was exactly right and Congressman Comer was right. They can't gag a political candidate. It violates the First Amendment. And I'll be very interested to see how the judge tries to do that. And my advice to Trump would be, ignore it. Hmm. Uh, you are an American citizen, despite Nancy Pelosi's comment that you have the right to prove you're innocent. That's baloney. That's, a, that's totalitarian. It's extremist. You, you are innocent until proven guilty. And in this particular case, it is such a rigged uh, case that almost nobody thinks it's a serious case. This is pure politics. I have to come back at you with the same question that I've asked most of our guests over the past couple of days, and that is, Trump looks likely to win the primaries, but cannot win the general. That's a broad comment, but what do you say, Newt? <laughs> I say it's nuts. <laughs> uh, okay. you, you know, you could have said that about Ronald Reagan in 1978 or 79. You know, he can't beat Jimmy Carter. Well, he crushed Jimmy Carter, largest sure. electoral defeat of any incumbent president in history. Uh, because people ultimately, when you get to 2026, people are going to look at their wallet, they're going to look at their job, they're going to look at the disaster on the border, they're going to look at the world slipping away from America and the Chinese and their, their dictator allies becoming more and more powerful, and they're going to say, you really want four more years of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and a continued decline of America? And what's beginning to build is, and, and I'm talking to you from Des Moines, Iowa, yeah. where I asked a whole series of Republicans yesterday, how had this state gone from being very competitive to being extraordinarily Republican? Every single one of them said it was the Democrats, mm -hmm. that common sense Iowans look at these extremists and say no. Well, I think by the summer of 26, people are going to look at the total failure of the Biden administration and the corruption of the system. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say no. And if no means Donald Trump, they're going to pick Donald Trump over an FBI, a border control, all the different things you and I know that are literally corrupt and that are stunningly dangerous for our future. Do you think, uh, we've got Speaker McCarthy here, he steered clear of backing anyone in the 2024 race. Just roll that tape, please. So you want somebody else in the White House, right? So you've got to understand, too, what's the debate going to be about? All the things that Biden has done that somebody else could do better. And so it's tough when you get in a competition, but members should really see that whoever runs. And lots of times, whoever the front runner is today is not the nominee. Note he did not say Trump nor DeSantis in that <laughs> entire thing. That was very slick. As a former speaker yourself, Newt, what do you make of uh, McCarthy's statement there? Look, I think Speaker McCarthy is exactly right. His job as speaker is to unify the Republican Party. And frankly, he's gotten an 86 percent of his bills so far. He's gotten Democrats to vote with him. Now, if he can offer a reasonable Republican Party versus an extremist Democratic Party, that's his job. And then he's going to work with whoever the nominee is. I, I think if you ask him in private, he'd say it's probably going to be Trump. Uh, but whoever the nominee is, the Republican Speaker of the House has an obligation to work with them to make sure we win the general election at every level. White House, Senate, House. And I think uh, the Speaker McCarthy is off to a pretty good start, and he has exactly the right position on this. And Newt Gingrich, all good stuff today. Thanks for joining us, Newt. It's always a pleasure, and we appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thanks very much indeed.